All right, so we're going to start our Europe unit. Um, I'm not going to click on this link just because it, it's several minutes long, um, but map changes over a thousand years. Um, Europe is one of those places that has changed. I don't know if I would say the most, but definitely it has changed several times. Um, in the 28 years that I've taught, it's even, I've had to have a different map for my class at least 10 different times. So Europe has either changed borders or even changed names within those borders. Um, and so it, it's definitely a changing region, um, which we find really odd because in the United States, things haven't changed for several decades. And so, you know, we're, we're pretty comfortable with knowing the same names and borders. Europe is also an interesting unit for me because I have traveled there several times, so I'll bring some of those stories into this as well. Um, and then also, um, again, you know, we talk about most of our history for the good majority of the people in our school have a, a ancestor connection back to Europe. All right, so we are going to label the map. And then we're going to take some notes. So label on your map Iceland. It is an island off of the coast of the mainland of Europe, but it is considered to be on the European continent. And the ironic thing is Iceland is more green and Greenland is more ice. Iceland and Greenland are fairly close to each other, um, but of course they were misnamed um, to keep people away from Iceland. Um, and this is a picture of Iceland where you can see it is definitely very green. The other thing that Iceland has is um, a lot of hot springs and geysers. It has a lot of volcanic activity. Um, in about 10 years ago, in 2010, there was a huge um, volcanic eruption in Iceland, and it spewed so much dust and debris and particles into the air that our own um, German kids that were flying from here to Germany, which they were going to land in Reykjavik, Iceland, um, and then change planes, their, their flight was canceled because they couldn't see. So um, although it's it, it the name says it's ice and cold, it actually has these natural hot springs and geysers and volcanic eruptions, which are not cold. All right, label. Norway at the top left. In the middle is Sweden. Finland is off to the right, bordering um, the west coast of Russia. And then Denmark is a peninsula that juts up north and then has some islands next to it. That region is also known as Scandinavia. Um, and so a lot of people in this area are, are, you know, have ancestors that are Scandinavian because many people from Norway, Sweden, Finland, and Denmark um, immigrated to the Midwest because they wanted to be here for farmland. The picture on the left of, is, of course, um, this area is also known for the Vikings. Um, off to the right is a picture of a fjord, F-J-O-R-D. A fjord is that agricult or the geographical feature of Norway. You can see in this picture that the west coast of Norway is not smooth border. It, it is very jutted in and out and there's a lot of these inlets and these inlets are called fjords and so it's a huge travel um, tourist travel attraction to take cruise ships in and out of these fjords. A couple other interesting facts about um, this region. Denmark is small enough that no matter where you're at you're never more than 32 miles from an ocean and um, Denmark is also the home of Lagos. All right, label the two islands on the west side of the European continent, Ireland and the United Kingdom. And you can see that the United Kingdom is shaded pink and Ireland is shaded green, but the whole I island that Ireland is on is not all belonging to Ireland. And that's caused some issues. You can see there are four parts to the United Kingdom. In the north is Scotland. The biggest portion and maybe the most well known is England and then you have Wales, and then Northern Ireland at the top of the island with Ireland is actually part of the United Kingdom. Ireland and the UK have been fighting over 
that territory, that land, of course, Ireland wants it back. And um, the UK says, no way, we're not giving it up. They've been fighting over that since 1921. Um, because of that, there's a group known as the IRA, the Irish Republican Army. And that was an organization that was trying to fight for the freedom of Northern Ireland to be back with Ireland instead of being part of the UK. Um, it has caused issues and controversies. There's been a lot of escalated violence over the years. Um, maybe not so much right now, uh, but definitely into um, the 90s, 1990s. Um, and that's where the movie The Devil's Own was, was um, put out. And it had Harrison Ford and Brad Pitt, and it was about that very conflict. And Brad Pitt was from Ireland. He was coming to the United States to buy illegal weapons to go back to fight for this. All right, another unique thing about those two countries, London, which is the capital of the United Kingdom, is the largest city in Europe with over 7 million people, yet the good majority of the police officers only carry billy clubs. They do not carry guns. There are armed police in London, but not every police officer is armed. And in 2011, there was um, an issue that this police officer shot Mark Dugan, um, maybe unprovoked or at least not justified and it sparked riots which were very similar to what has happened recently in the United States. All right, um, long live the Queen. Obviously the United Kingdom has a monarchy and so they have a Queen and so she is part of the royal family. Her husband Prince Philip is not the King. He is a Prince because it is he is married into the family. He is not in the blood of the royalty um, but her role really isn't running the United Kingdom. It's more a, a figurehead. She's more just an icon. The real person that kind of runs the government is the prime minister of the United Kingdom. But this is kind of a unique um, look back at how long she has ruled. Um, I think almost 70 years she has ruled. So you, of course, have she's ruled during our pre most recent president, Joe Biden. And then she ruled during Donald Trump's presidency the two terms for Barack Obama, George W. Bush, then during Bill Clinton's reign, then of course we have George H. Bush and his presidency, and there's Ronald Reagan, again in the, the late 80s, um, and you can see just how much younger Queen Elizabeth is looking. Um, and then you go back to President Jimmy Carter in the 70s, LBJ, Richard Nixon, JFK, Dwight D. Eisenhower, and back to Harry Truman. So this was the president where she was um, first named as the Queen of the United Kingdom. All right, let's label the next two, Netherlands and Belgium. They are on the, on the mainland, and I always just remember these two are very similar in size, but Netherlands is to the north with an N. Belgium is to the bottom with a B. Netherlands, part of Netherlands, there's a region known as Holland. That is, of course, where the Dutch are from. Both Netherlands and Belgium speak Dutch, so they are Dutch communities. Um, here in Iowa, we have a connection because the Dutch settled in the area of Pella. That's why Pella has, you know, the Tulip Festival, again, has the Dutch ancestors. So the windmills, the wooden shoes, and the tulips. And these pictures are of um, tulips and wildflowers in um, Holland. Belgium. Um, two foods are well known from Belgium. The Belgian waffle, of course named after the country, and then Brussels sprouts named after the capital. And Brussels sprouts were first grown in the 1200s, in the early 1200s, in this region. All right, now Russia is that light tan color, and it also has that small region there um, along the border of water. Um, I put that in gray because you don't need to know Russia on the map test, but I want you to know that all of these countries have a connection to Russia and they, most of them border Russia. So you have Estonia at the north, then Latvia, then Lithuania, then Belarus, then Ukraine, then Moldova. So I remember it alphabetically. E for Estonia comes first, then LA, 
alphabetically comes next, Latvia. Then L-I comes next. Then I know B doesn't come next alphabetically, but I think B is a bigger country. And then Ukraine um, is just much bigger. And then Moldova. So what do these all have in common? They all used to be part of the former Soviet Union. Um, from 1921 to 1991, they were the Soviet Union and they were ruled by a communist government. Um, in 1991, they broke up into 15 semi-independent countries called the Commonwealth of Independent States. They were independent, but economically kind of had a link or a connection so that these new countries wouldn't fail in the new world economy. Um, and then, um, since then, they are now completely independent, so they, they are not called the Commonwealth of Independent States. Now, Russia and these countries um, kind of teeter on the border of Europe or Asia. The Ural Mountains, which kind of go right in this area here, straight down, um, are really what separates Europe and Asia. And so part of Russia is considered in Europe and part of it is considered in, in Asia.